According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks fell Friday as the escalating fight between the U.S. and China for technological dominance triggered Alibaba Group Holding Limited to scrap the listing of its $11 billion cloud unit. Alibaba's 10% slump, the biggest in a year, weighed on benchmarks of Hong Kong and the mainland as the company scuttled its planned cloud spin-off due to U.S. restrictions on the export of chips. The broader MSCI Asia Pacific Index was down, but still on pace for a weekly gain of about 3%. Bonds climbed after data underscored a gradual deceleration in the U.S. economy. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited's market value has slumped to only about half that of rival Tencent Holdings Limited as the former's e-commerce-centric business faces sluggish demand and intensified competition. Alibaba, whose other main business line includes cloud computing, has a market capitalization of $201 billion, while Tencent, focused on social media and gaming, boasts $391 billion, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Alibaba's shares now trade around eight times forward earnings multiples, about half of 10 cents 16 times. According to Bloomberg, Sri Lanka's central bank chief said the government has shared the terms of a $4.2 billion China debt deal with other creditors, a key sticking point with countries like India, paving the way for more loans from the International Monetary Fund. Governor Nandalal Wirasinghe said he hopes the official creditors committee, which is led by Japan, India and the Paris Club of Nations, will now propose an agreement to restructure Sri Lanka's debt. He expects that will allow the IMF to approve a payout of $330 million before the end of the year, he said in an interview in Colombo on Thursday. According to Reuters, Indian investigators are seeking to restart a probe into Adani Group for alleged overvaluation of coal imports and have asked the Supreme Court to allow them to collect evidence from Singapore, a step they say the company thwarted for years, legal documents show. The Directorate of Revenue Intelligence since 2016 has been trying to procure transaction documents related to Adani's dealings from Singapore authorities. The agency suspects many of the group's coal shipments imported from Indonesian suppliers were first billed at higher prices on paper to its Singapore unit, Adani Global Private, and then to its Indian arms. According to Bloomberg, Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda said that there are both positives and negatives to the weak yen's impact, suggesting he's determined to keep stimulus unchanged for now despite heightened concerns over the yen. While it's true that a weak yen amplifies negative economic impacts by lifting up import prices, it also helps boost exports including inbound spending, and lifts global businesses' profits, Ueda said in response to questions in Parliament Friday. According to Reuters, South Korean prosecutors sought on Friday a five-year jail term for the boss of Samsung Electronics J.Y. Lee over charges of accounting fraud and stock price manipulation involving an $8 billion merger of Samsung affiliates in 2015. Lee has denied any wrongdoing. The hearing is the final lower court session before a ruling, which is expected within months, ending a trial that has lasted three years. According to Bloomberg, Western Australia's Grain Association has cut its forecast for the state's wheat production again due to hot weather, with most of the overall grains harvest expected to be finished by the end of December. The majority of wheat crops have suffered from drier conditions and yields have been coming in lower than anticipated at the start of harvest, according to a monthly report from the Grain Industry Association of Western Australia. The state is the nation's biggest exporter of the food staple. According to Bloomberg, Mark Mobius, whose name has been synonymous with investing in developing countries for a third of a century, isn't planning to slow down even as he steps back from the firm that bears his name. The 87-year-old money manager said he's busier than ever as he looks to set up a new venture in Dubai. According to Bloomberg, Malaysia's economic growth accelerated in the third quarter as consumer spending along with the services and construction sectors helped counter the impact of faltering exports. Gross domestic product expanded 3.3% in the July to September period from a year ago, according to the Central Bank and the Department of Statistics Malaysia on Friday, in line with the preliminary reading last month and from a 2.9% gain in the second quarter. The economy rose 2.6% quarter on quarter. According to Bloomberg, Israel distributed photos and a brief video of what a spokesman said was a tunnel shaft at Shifa Hospital in Gaza City as pressure increased for the armed forces to provide evidence of Hamas's presence at the site of an Israeli raid in recent days. 
Israel now controls Gaza's harbor, after killing 10 militants, clearing the surrounding buildings, and dismantling 10 tunnel shafts, the military said in a statement. People in the southern Gaza Strip reported Israel had dropped leaflets near Khan Yunus to flee, raising fears that Israel was expanding its battle against Hamas, which is designated a terrorist organization by the US and Europe. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields dropped across the curve on Friday to multi-month lows, mirroring their U.S. Treasury peers as investors continued to search for appropriate JGB price levels weeks after the Bank of Japan tweaked its yield curve control policy. The 10-year JGB yield declined 7 basis points to 0.715%, its lowest level since September 19. According to Reuters, Banks and other financiers should withdraw their support of Total Energy's $20 billion liquefied natural gas terminal in Mozambique, environmental lobby groups urged in a letter sent to more than two dozen project funders on Friday. The letter, seen by Reuters, comes at a crucial juncture for the French energy company as it prepares to relaunch Africa's largest foreign direct investment project. According to Bloomberg, Bain Capital LP raised $7.1 billion for its new buyout fund dedicated to Asia Pacific, people familiar with the matter said, defying a fundraising gloom triggered by lingering economic concerns and persistent geopolitical tensions. The Boston-based alternative asset manager gathered $6.3 billion from investors for its fifth buyout fund in the region, and $750 million in co-investments from its employees, one of the people said, asking not to be identified before a public announcement. Its previous Asia fund was $4 billion, not including internal contributions. According to Bloomberg, U.S. President Joe Biden met Thursday with counterparts from South Korea and Japan, two top U.S. allies, a day after his landmark summit with China's President Xi Jinping. The gathering, on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum Thursday, offered Biden a chance to brief Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol on his hours of discussion with Xi Wednesday. According to Reuters, Warren Buffett's vote of confidence in Japanese trading houses is helping Mitsubishi Corp overcome long-held investor wariness about its complex global business that covers everything from sausages to natural gas, a top executive said. Japan's largest trading house has seen heightened interest from potential investors since Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway took a stake in 2020 that it later increased, Kenji Kobayashi, Mitsubishi's chief stakeholder engagement officer, told Reuters. According to Reuters, global companies are making a beeline for China's debt markets, issuing record amounts of yuan-denominated bonds and borrowing heavily from mainland banks, capitalizing on rock-bottom yuan interest rates as funding costs elsewhere jump. Companies and banks are raising record amounts of cash through yuan bonds issued in mainland China and in Hong Kong, known as Panda and Dim Sum bonds, respectively. According to Bloomberg, Xi Jinping's message that China wants to roll out the red carpet for foreign businesses stands in stark contrast to the increasing difficulties many companies experience on the ground. In written remarks Thursday to the APEC CEO summit in San Francisco, the Chinese leader said his government would take more heartwarming measures to attract foreign nationals to the world's second-largest economy, which has struggled to regain its footing in the wake of the pandemic. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in European and global markets from Wayne Cole. Asia has been in a contemplative mood so far on Friday after another week of wild swings in bonds, equities and commodities. The oil market was the latest to be visited by volatility as prices slid almost 5% overnight in part due to concerns about oversupply and diminishing demand. According to Reuters, international lenders including the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the World Bank are backing a €4 billion Euro plan to wean North Macedonia off coal-fired power, the head of the EBRD told Reuters. The deal, which is expected to be announced at the COP28 climate talks in Dubai beginning on November 30, will lay out a plan to close the country's two coal power plants and replace them with 1.7 gigawatts of renewable energy. According to Bloomberg, Panasonic Corp. has agreed to sell part of its automotive systems unit to Apollo Global Management Inc. and potentially seek a public listing of the business. The Japanese electronics maker signed a memorandum of understanding with an Apollo affiliate and will seek to finalize the deal by March 31, the company said in a statement Friday.
According to Bloomberg, oil headed for a fourth weekly loss after sinking into a bear market as signs of healthy supplies and rising stockpiles offset attempts by OPEC plus leaders Saudi Arabia and Russia to keep declines in check. West Texas Intermediate traded near $73 a barrel after dropping more than 20% drop from a high in September. Brent plunged almost 5% on Thursday. The declines followed a build in U.S. crude inventories, and were likely amplified by automated selling programs. According to Reuters, Russia's largest carmaker Avtovaz said it had lowered its production forecast for Lada cars due to U.S. sanctions imposed in September, Interfax news agency reported on Friday. The company now expects 2023 full-year Lada production to be as much as 10% less than the previously forecasted 400,000 cars, Maxim Sokolov. Avtovaz president, told journalists at the Transport of Russia 2023 Feet Forum in Moscow. According to Reuters, Japan's core consumer inflation likely accelerated again in October, staying above the central bank's 2% price target for a 19th straight month, a Reuters poll found on Friday. The nationwide core consumer price index, which strips off volatile fresh food items, likely grew 3.0% in October from a year ago according to the median estimate of 17 economists, compared with a 2.8% gain in September. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose on Friday to book its third straight winning week, helped by a strong domestic earnings season that just wrapped up. The Nikkei ended the day up 0.48% at 33,585.20, extending its gain for the week to 3.12%. According to Reuters, the world's biggest luxury brands seeking growth in their second-largest market China are all courting the likes of wealthy entrepreneur Diana Wang. Shanghai-based Wang, an investor who also owns a namesake fashion label, is an avid collector of fine jewelry who regularly shops at Cartier, Tiffany and Choppard, among others. According to Reuters, the South African rand was little changed in early trade on Friday ahead of SP's sovereign credit rating review and talks by four U.S. Federal Reserve speakers that could move markets. At 0625, G.M.T., the RAND traded at 18.3850 against the dollar, not far from its previous close of 18.3725. According to Reuters, Hong Kong listed shares of China's Alibaba Group plunged 10% on Friday, wiping about $20 billion off its market value after the company scrapped plans to spin off its cloud business. Alibaba said its decision to shelve the spin-off was due to uncertainties fueled by U.S. curbs on exports to China of chips used in artificial intelligence applications. According to Reuters, even with two geopolitically risky wars raging and a series of critical elections next year, there's little in annual outlooks suggesting investors should head for the bunkers. Judging by a torrent of 2024 investment advisories already filling inboxes, anxious geopolitics, turbulent for over five years amid trade wars, a pandemic, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the Israel-Hamas war, is now almost considered a constant to be navigated rather than a reason to go to ground. According to Reuters, China is widely expected to leave lending benchmark rates unchanged at a monthly fixing on Monday after the central bank kept medium-term interbank rates steady and amid wider concerns about pressure on the yuan. The loan prime rate normally charged to banks' best clients is calculated each month after 18 designated commercial banks submit proposed rates to the People's Bank of China. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden signed on Thursday a stopgap spending bill to avert a government shutdown, a day after the Senate passed it, the White House said. Biden signed the document on the sidelines of a dinner at the Legion of Honor Museum in San Francisco, where leaders are attending the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden signed a stopgap bill to extend government funding into early 2024, averting a government shutdown for now but kicking a politically divisive debate over federal spending into a presidential election year. The White House confirmed the move in a statement early Friday morning in Washington less than a day before existing funding would have expired. Biden, in California for a summit of APEC leaders, signed the legislation on Thursday, according to the statement. According to Reuters, U.S. retailers are gearing up for Black Friday, marking the start of the shopping season that follows the Thanksgiving holiday, 
while business activity data should gauge the temperature elsewhere. Britain's budget update is in the spotlight, while the yen might get some breathing space and Argentina heads for a key election. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble steadied near a more than four-month high against the dollar on Friday, supported by exporters' foreign currency purchases and high interest rates, but restrained from growth following a sharp drop in oil prices. At 0710 GMT, the ruble was unchanged against the dollar at 89.18, not far from its strongest point since July 4 of 88.5725, hit on Thursday. According to Reuters, Italy's defense and aerospace conglomerate Leonardo said on Friday it had sold 6.9% of its U.S. subsidiary DRS at $17.75 per share. The state-controlled group sold 18 million shares in the upsized public secondary offering, leaving it with a 73.3% stake in DRS. Leonardo also granted a 30-day option to underwriters for the purchase of a further 2.7 million shares. According to Reuters, China's Narcotics Control Agency has warned against the manufacture and sale of substances that can be used to make illegal drugs, a day after President Xi Jinping said China would stem the export of items used to make the opioid fentanyl. In a circular issued on Thursday, the Office of the China National Narcotics Control Commission also cautioned against the risk of running into the long-arm jurisdiction of foreign law enforcement agencies. According to Bloomberg, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defended an Israeli raid on Al-Shifa hospital, saying troops uncovered a Hamas command center beneath the facility in Gaza City. His government distributed photos and a video of what it said was a tunnel shaft, amid international pressure to restrain the offensive because plenty of patients and people seeking shelter are still at the site. Israel now controls Gaza's harbor, the military said. In the southern city of Khan Yunus, people reported that Israel had dropped leaflets telling them to flee to known shelters. That's raising concerns the military may expand its battle against Hamas, designated a terrorist organization by the U.S., outside the north of Gaza, where's it's focused its ground assault so far. According to Reuters, China's central bank asked some lenders to cap interest rates on an interbank debt instrument this month, people with knowledge of the matter said on Friday referring to the rising short-term yields on bank debt and strains in funding markets. Some large-sized commercial lenders were told not to sell negotiable certificates of deposit at very high rates, four sources said. NCDs are a popular short-term debt instrument issued between banks for their financing needs. According to Reuters, France's Alstom is set to sell its 20% stake in Transmash holding back to the Russian railcar manufacturer by the end of the year, the Interfax news agency cited TMH head Kirill Lipa as saying on Friday. The French trainmaker said in March 2022 it would suspend all deliveries and future business investments in Russia, one of scores of Western companies to shun Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine. According to Bloomberg, the West's sanctions on Russian oil exports are failing to deprive the Kremlin of revenue to fund its war in Ukraine, meaning the measures are not succeeding in one of their principal objectives. Whether in dollars or rubles, net or gross, Russian finance ministry data show that the money flooding into government coffers has been grinding higher for months now. According to Reuters, shares of Swedish automaker Volvo Cars fell 14% on Friday as its top owner, China's Geely, sold parts of its holdings at a deep discount to the previous day's closing price. Geely on Thursday launched a placing of some 100 million Volvo Cars shares, which the deal's bookrunner later said was sold at a price of around 37 Swedish crowns each, or around $350 million in total. According to Reuters, BP is seeking partners for offshore wind projects in Japan and may invest in hydrogen technology companies to tackle inflation and equipment bottlenecks that have battered the renewables sector. The oil major plans to expand in low-carbon energy in the coming decades as it seeks a long-term business model that can survive the global transition from fossil fuels. Some investors have criticized the strategy for taking BP's focus from higher returns on oil and gas businesses. According to Bloomberg, a Chinese maker of drugs used in cancer treatments surged in Hong Kong after an initial public offering priced at the top of a marketed range a rare case of strong demand for a listing in the financial hub this year. Shares of Wuxi XDC Cayman Inc. closed 36% higher on its debut, after climbing as much as 42%.
The biopharmaceutical company raised 3.68 billion Hong Kong dollars from the share sale, with the stock priced at 20 Hong Kong dollars and 60 cents apiece compared with a starting level of 19 dollars and 90 cents. It's the first among 14 listings larger than 100 million dollars in the city this year that was priced at the highest indicated value, Bloomberg compiled data showed. According to Bloomberg, the gap between liquefied natural gas prices in Asia and Europe is increasing as tighter restrictions at the drought-stricken Panama Canal threaten to make journeys costlier from mainly U.S. suppliers. The Asian gas price premium to Europe for summer 2024 has more than doubled since October 30, when the Panama Canal announced that it would further restrict passage, while the winter 2024 spread has also jumped. The number of slots available for ships the size of LNG carriers will be reduced by half come January, according to Bloomberg Neff. According to Bloomberg, the leading producers of chipmaking equipment are seeing a spike in the percentage of revenue they get from China, as the country stockpiles equipment in an effort to counter U.S. trade curbs on advanced semiconductors. The world's biggest suppliers of essential chip fabrication machinery drew more than 40% of their revenue from Chinese customers in the most recent quarter, and nearly half in the case of LAM Research Corp. Japan's Tokyo Electron Limited hit a record in the share of its shipments to China, while sales to the country made up a high proportion of ASML holding NV's revenue despite a ban from shipping its most advanced and lucrative systems there. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank's decision to halt interest rate increases at its October meeting is fully justified by a slowdown in inflation, Governing Council member Francois Villeroy de Galhau said. The pace of price increases has declined considerably and an underlying measure clearly passed a peak in the spring after the ECB began tightening last year, the Bank of France governor said. According to Bloomberg, an escalating fight between the U.S. and China for technological dominance has triggered one of the most stunning reversals of corporate strategy yet. On Thursday, Alibaba Group Holding Limited walked back plans to spin off and list its $11 billion cloud business. Chairman Joseph Tsai and Chief Executive Officer Eddie Wu, two of Alibaba founder Jack Ma's longest standing lieutenants, said China's e commerce and internet computing leader needed a strategy reset. Wu explained in his first public remarks since taking the helm that the U.S.'s ever-increasing restrictions on chip sales to China has forced the company to rethink its plan to break up the empire Ma spent decades amassing into six parts. According to Reuters, Masanori Mochida, president of Goldman Sachs' Japanese unit, will retire after more than three decades at the U.S. investment bank, a person familiar with the matter told Reuters on Friday. Mochida, who is in his late 60s, joined Goldman Sachs in 1985 as an associate in the corporate finance department from Japan's Daiichi Kanjio Bank, one of the three predecessor banks of Mizuo Bank. He became co-branch manager of Goldman Sachs Japan in 1999. According to Bloomberg, Jack Ma is preparing one of his biggest Alibaba Group holding limited. Stake reductions in recent years, and the timing could hardly be worse. The wealth of the e-commerce giant's co-founder shrank by $683 million after Alibaba's biggest sell-off in more than a year Thursday, just days before Ma's planned share sale next week. According to Reuters, the pound weakened on Friday after data showed that British retail sales unexpectedly fell in October, as cash-strapped consumers stayed at home, stirring up investor concern about the resilience of household spending power. Retail sales volumes dropped 0.3% month-on-month, following a revised 1.1% decline in September that was worse than first estimated, the Office for National Statistics said. According to Reuters, Eurozone yields hit fresh 2 minus one month lows on Friday, and money markets increased their bets on European central bank rate cuts after a batch of soft U.S. economic data supported the view that the big central bank's fight against inflation could be over. U.S. borrowing costs were lower in London trade, with 10-year Treasury yields dropping five basis points after hovering near two-month lows the day before as data helped cement expectations the Federal Reserve will not raise rates. According to Reuters, EU regulators will challenge banks over their failure to properly apply an accounting rule aimed at making sure their provisioning for souring loans is timely and sufficient, the bloc's banking watchdog said on Friday. The European Banking Authority said its second report into how the IFRS 9 rule, 
which was designed to respond to a central lesson arising from the global financial crisis of 2008, uncovered the same shortcomings as its initial review. According to Reuters, more expensive services and food were the main drivers of consumer price growth in the eurozone in October, data showed on Friday, as the EU statistics office confirmed year-on-year -year inflation slowed sharply. Eurostat said consumer inflation in the 20 countries using the euro decelerated to 2.9% year-on-year in October from 4.3% in September after prices rose 0.1% month-on-month. According to Bloomberg, Applied Materials Inc., the largest U.S. maker of chipmaking machinery, slid in late trading following a report that it faces a U.S. criminal investigation for allegedly violating export restrictions to China. The company is being probed by the Justice Department over dealings with China's biggest chipmaker, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp., according to Reuters. The department is looking at whether Applied Materials sold hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment without the proper licenses, the news outlet reported, citing unidentified people familiar with the situation. According to Bloomberg, a Chinese fertilizer group asked members to curb exports and recall shipped cargoes to secure domestic supplies and stabilize prices, the latest measures by the nation to restrict crop nutrient shipments. Producers should also keep factory prices of products below levels recorded on November 16, and lower sale prices if profit margins are high according to a notice on the website of the China Nitrogen Fertilizer Industry Association, a group under management of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. According to Bloomberg, Europe's sputtering economy is causing traders to bet on a faster pace of interest rate cuts next year. For the first time, money markets have priced in a full percentage point of interest rate cuts in 2024. Just two months ago, the expectation was that the European Central Bank would deliver a 75 basis point decrease, according to swaps pricing tied to central bank meeting dates. According to Reuters, Israel risks facing a long and bloody insurgency if it defeats Hamas and occupies Gaza without a credible post-war plan to withdraw its troops and move toward the creation of a Palestinian state, U.S. and Arab officials, diplomats and analysts said. None of the ideas floated so far by Israel, the United States and Arab nations for the post-war administration of Gaza have managed to gain traction according to two U.S. and four regional officials as well as four diplomats familiar with the discussions, raising fears the Israeli military may become mired in a prolonged security operation. According to Bloomberg, fallout from an Elon Musk post endorsing anti-Semitic views continues to spread, with Tesla Inc. investors criticizing the billionaire and more advertisers fleeing his social media platform X. The European Commission on Friday joined International Business Machines Corp in announcing its decision to stop advertising on the service formerly known as Twitter, after Musk affirmed a post accusing Jewish communities of hating white people. Tesla shares fell 3.8% on Thursday, trailing the benchmark SP500 index, which was little changed. According to Reuters, a German court ruling that forced Berlin to freeze 60 billion euros in planned green investment spending could have a negative impact on the country's growth, an economy ministry source told Reuters on Friday. According to initial estimates, the loss of investment funds could reduce growth by around half a percentage point in 2024, the source added. According to Reuters, Amazon is targeting merchandise exports worth $20 billion from India by 2025 by adding thousands of small sellers to its e-commerce platform, a company official said on Friday. We are very encouraged by the number of entrepreneurs who signed up this year. We are looking to scale up, Bupin Wakankar, Director Global Trade, Amazon told Reuters on the sidelines of an industry event, referring to plans for exports. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden concludes a four-day diplomatic push with China as well as other Pacific nations on Friday in a final meeting with world leaders and a visit with Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador. Biden who met with President Xi Jinping on Wednesday and used Thursday to highlight strong economic ties between the U.S. and the other Pacific nations, will have one final large gathering of leaders on Friday where he will formally transfer the chair of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation to Peru President Dina Boluarte. According to Reuters, they have opposing views on Israel's war with Hamas and conflicting attitudes to Moscow since the invasion of Ukraine but when Germany and Turkey's leaders meet in Berlin they have powerful economic and electoral incentives to talk. 
Tayyip Erdogan's first visit to Germany since 2020 comes ahead of municipal elections at which he hopes to win back the cities of Ankara and Istanbul. The prospect of better access to the European Union market and visa liberalization would be a big gift to voters buffeted by high inflation in an economic crisis. According to Reuters, Argentine voters are angry and afraid. Which is stronger will tip the balance of the South American country's presidential election on Sunday and may reshape its diplomatic ties, economic future, and the wider region's political fault lines. The country of some 45 million people will vote in the November 19 runoff election between Sergio Massa, currently economy minister for the ruling Peronists, and libertarian outsider Javier Millet. Opinion polls indicate a tight race and a deeply divided electorate. According to Reuters, the U.S. consumer watchdog, not usually known to side with Wall Street lenders, has handed them a rare win by cracking down on big tech companies that are increasingly encroaching on banking turf. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau last week proposed regulating payments and smartphone wallets provided by tech leaders like Apple and Google, arguing they now rival traditional bank services in scale and scope and should be subject to the same consumer safeguards. According to Reuters, Spanish utility Iberdrola is planning to make an offer for electricity northwest that could value the British power distribution network at a maximum of £3.5 billion, two sources familiar with the matter said. Sources told Reuters in October that ENWL's shareholders are working with investment bank Jefferies on a strategic review of the network operator, which delivers electricity to some 5 million customers in Manchester, Lancashire and Cumbria. According to Reuters, a shift in UK pension pot cash into UK companies would boost Britain's stock market in just a few years but progress is needed, London Stock Exchange Group CEO David Schwimmer said on Friday. Britain's finance minister Jeremy Hunt is due next week to set out further measures to channel pension money into UK growth companies. According to Reuters, some 151 ships have used Ukraine's new Black Sea shipping corridor since it was set up in August, the Interfax Ukraine news agency reported on Friday, citing a senior government official. A total of 4.4 million metric tons of cargo, including 3.2 million tons of grain, has been shipped via the corridor. Yuri Vaskov, Deputy Minister for Renovation and Infrastructure, was quoted as saying. According to Reuters, U.S. 10-year Treasury yields fell to their lowest in two months on Friday, as investors priced in the possibility that interest rates could be as much as a full percentage point lower in a year's time than now given recent soft economic data. The yield on the 10-year note fell by as much as 6.6 .6 basis points to a session low of 4.379%. It was last down 5 bits per second on the day at 4.393%. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures edged higher on Friday as Treasury yields extended declines from the previous session, and as weak recent economic data cemented hopes that the Federal Reserve is most likely done raising interest rates. The SP500 and the Nasdaq eked out marginal gains on Thursday on falling Treasury yields after higher than expected jobless claims supported some megacap stocks, with the yield on the 10 year Treasury note further easing on Friday, last at 4.3849%. U.S. According to Bloomberg, for all the tough decisions Federal Reserve officials have made during their 20 month inflation battle, you wouldn't know it from looking at the policy votes. Over the past 11 meetings of the Federal Open Market Committee, not a single member voted against the actions led by Chair Jerome Powell, an unusually long stretch of unanimity that belies underlying differences and uncertainty over the direction of monetary policy and the economy. According to Reuters, Blackstone and Macquarie on Friday dismissed as completely false an Italian newspaper report about possible ownership changes at Autostrade per l'Italia, pledging their commitment as investors in the motorway operator. La Stampa Daily reported that J.P. Morgan drew up a plan last month to merge Aspie and domestic rival ASTM, a move that would have the backing of ASTM's controlling shareholder, Italy's Gavio Group. According to Reuters, dock workers in Sweden expanded their protest action against Tesla on Friday and are now preventing the U.S. firm's cars from being unloaded at all ports in sympathy with Tesla workers demanding collective bargaining agreements. Tesla co-founded by billionaire Elon Musk, does not manufacture in Sweden, but its electric cars are serviced by around 130 mechanics affiliated with Swedish Union if Metal, which began a strike on October 27.
According to Bloomberg, Marcella Moreno, a preschool teacher in the central Argentine province of Córdoba, voted for libertarian economist Javier Malay in last month's presidential election. With days to the runoff, she's having cold feet. Oh, God, what have I done? Said Moreno, 47, leaving work to catch the bus in her school apron. Moreno thinks she'll vote for Malay again because she wouldn't support the current government, but fears her school could shudder if he follows through on his pledge to take a chainsaw to Argentina's sprawling state budget to thwart triple-digit inflation. According to Reuters, Fisker said on Friday that its new distribution strategy would help improve delivery speed and volume, which the electric vehicle company noted was a bottleneck that curbed production. Earlier this week, the company slashed its production target for the year to 13,000 to 17,000 vehicles, from 20,000 to 23,000 units to avoid accumulation of inventory and better manage working capital. According to Bloomberg, banks have already turned to AI for derivatives trading and fraud detection. Now they want to use it for the annual review process. That's according to Workday Inc., one of the world's largest providers of HR software. The firm in September rolled out a bevy of new products that rely on artificial intelligence to write job descriptions or aid managers in writing up annual reviews of workers' performance. According to Reuters, the Brazilian economy ended the third quarter in negative territory, central bank data showed on Friday, reversing a performance that had been surprisingly positive due to a booming farming sector. According to Yahoo Finance, President Joe Biden has signed into law an idea championed by new Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, which implements a temporary two-step solution to Washington's spending fights, and will give Washington and the country a temporary reprieve from shutdown fights at least for the holiday season. After a series of overwhelmingly bipartisan votes, 87 to 11 in the Senate and 336 to 95 in the House of Representatives, the president signed the bill late Thursday night while in California for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Conference. According to Reuters, shares of Gap surged 20% in pre-market trading on Friday as investors cheered signs that the apparel maker's efforts to bring in trendier and in-demand clothing at its old Navy brand and keep inventory under control were paying off. Last year, like Walmart and Target, Gap discounted heavily to clear excess stocks due to weaker demand for non-essential products and aggravated by out-of-style clothing at the company's brands. According to Bloomberg, China told a handful of nationwide lenders to cap interest rates on interbank funding, people familiar with the directive said, a move that dovetailed with a sizable cash injection intended to calm the market after last month's unexpected liquidity crunch. At least two national banks were told last week by regulators to offer rates on one-year negotiable certificates of deposit at no higher than 2.57%, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing private information. On Thursday, the prime NCD rate, an index measuring primary issuance rates on CDs of major commercial banks, was in line with that level at around 2.57%, according to National Interbank Funding Center's website. According to Bloomberg, investors were given plenty of opportunities to fret about the outlook for technology giants this earnings season. Instead, they doubled down on a strategy that has worked all year, piling into the biggest stocks. That buying spree has fueled an abrupt U-turn in the Nasdaq 100 stock index that went from correction territory to a 15-month high in a matter of three weeks, adding roughly $2 trillion in market value along the way. According to Reuters, Futures tracking Canada's resource-heavy main stock index rose on Friday, buoyed by higher commodity prices and growing optimism around the U.S. central bank to likely forego any more interest rate hikes. December futures on the SPTSX index were up 0.5% at 7.13 a.m. Eastern Time. According to Bloomberg, at first blush, a record $100 billion flood into actively managed exchange-traded funds this year raises a tantalizing prospect. A revival of stock picking even as only big tech names outperform the market. Yet, a look under the hood of popular ETFs shows the boom is almost entirely taking place in passive looking trades. Active strategies have attracted nearly 25% of the $423 billion that's flowed to US ETFs so far in 2023, a record share. Meanwhile, active ETFs are launching at a record pace making up 96% of October's new debuts as issuers race to stake claim to a quickly growing corner of the $7.5 trillion industry, 
Bloomberg Intelligence Data Show. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly on Friday extended the deadline for Point Biopharma Global shareholders by about two weeks to December 1 to sell their stock, due to low participation. In October, Lilly agreed to acquire Point Biopharma in an all-cash deal valued at $1.4 billion to gain access to its experimental therapies that enable precise targeting of cancer. According to Bloomberg, InvestCorp Capital PLC, an investment vehicle backed by the Middle East's biggest alternative asset manager, dropped on its first day of trading after its $451 million initial public offering in a rare poor debut in the region. Shares in the company opened flat at the offering price of 2.30 dirhams in Abu Dhabi on Friday before climbing to as much as 2.40 dirhams. The stock then paired all of those gains to trade 2.6% lower at 11.41 a.m. local time. According to Reuters, retail flows into Eli Lilly spiked to a more than two-year high in November as small investors rushed to buy the stock after the U.S. pharma major received a highly anticipated approval for its weight loss drug Zepbound. Daily net purchases surged to $14.4 million on November 8, when Zepbound was cleared in the U.S. and the U.K., hitting their highest levels since January 2021, as per data from Vanda Research. Lilly and Novo Nordisk, seen as leaders in a potential $100 billion obesity treatment market, have helped rekindle retail investor interest in the healthcare sector. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank should reduce the amount of interest it pays commercial banks on reserves held with it, Bundesbank President Joachim Nagel said on Friday, and keep open the option of further rate hikes as inflation remains too high. With lenders earning generous profits at the expense of the central bank, some policymakers have called on the ECB to cut the interest it pays on the fund's bank's park with it overnight. According to Reuters, Germany sees itself as the European defender of solid finances with its debt break restricting the public deficit to 0.35% of GDP but the Eurozone's largest economy relies on off-budget funds to comply with the debt ceiling for financing its fiscal needs. Germany's constitutional court ruled on Wednesday that the coalition government's decision to reallocate 60 billion euros of unused debt from the pandemic era to its climate and transformation fund was unconstitutional, a blow that could put at risk other off-the-budget funds. According to Bloomberg, one of the major investors caught in Credit Suisse's historic wipeout of AT1s just bought similar securities sold by the bank's new owner, UBS Group AG. Alliance Bernstein LP participated in the Swiss bank's $3.5 billion sale last week, according to John Taylor, director of global multi-sector at the $650 billion asset manager. According to Reuters, Crop protection products maker FMC Corp. has launched a strategic review of its non-core assets, including a potential sale of its non-crop business. A slowdown in demand for herbicide and pesticides as well as excess inventories had resulted in large destocking in South America, denting the U.S.-based company's earnings for much of the year. According to Bloomberg, a cut in European central bank interest rates won't be happening in the near future, according to Bundesbank President Joachim Nagel. Borrowing costs have to remain at a high level for a sufficient period, Nagel said in a speech in Frankfurt on Friday. While it is impossible to predict exactly how long this period will be, it is highly improbable that it will end anytime soon. According to Reuters, Brazil joined the World Trade Organization's agreement on trade in civil aircraft on Friday, a move that was celebrated by planemaker Embraer as the pact would ensure tariff-free imports of components from member states. The Brazilian government, which had applied to join the Civil Aircraft Pact in 2022, said its entry had been approved by the 33 member countries at a meeting in Geneva. According to Reuters, Britain's National Grid said on Friday its two utility firms in Massachusetts have submitted a clean energy investment plan to authorities in the U.S. state as part of the group's required rate case filing. According to Reuters, U.S. single-family homebuilding increased marginally in October and activity could remain moderate in the near term amid higher mortgage rates, which saw confidence among builders slumping this month. Single-family housing starts, which account for the bulk of homebuilding, rose 0.2% to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 970,000 units last month, the Commerce Department's Census Bureau said on Friday.
data for September was revised up to show starts rising to a rate of 968,000 units instead of 963,000 units as previously reported. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly will build its first plant in Germany for 2.3 billion euros in the western town of Alzi, the U.S. pharmaceuticals maker said on Friday, as the sector scrambles to meet demand for new diabetes and obesity therapies. The new site will produce diabetes drugs and injection pens to administer them, Lilly said in a statement. According to Reuters, the European Union should impose broader import bans on Russian aluminium as part of its latest package of sanctions, industry group European Aluminium said on Friday. The European Commission on Wednesday proposed a new package of sanctions against Moscow, including a ban on imports of diamonds and liquid petroleum gas from Russia. According to Reuters, improvements in labor supply that seem to occur as the overall job market gets tighter means Federal Reserve policymakers may need to worry less about inflation at such moments and let the benefits of strong employment spread to workers, Boston Fed President Susan Collins said Friday. In both the 2010s and recently an unexpected jump in the number of people working or looking for work helped employment expand without boosting wage and other cost pressures. The Fed needs to better understand these developments, she said, to operationalize U.S. monetary policy that strives to keep inflation stable while maximizing employment. According to Bloomberg, Canadian financial group Fairfax Financial Holdings Limited offered to buy out minority shareholders of agriculture technology firm Farmers Edge Inc. at a price that would crystallize near total losses for any longer-term holders of the stock. Fairfax's takeover bid of 25 Canadian cents a share is almost 99% below the C-17 a share at which Farmers Edge offered stock in a March 2021 initial public offering. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks were set for a higher open on Friday as Treasury yields extended declines from the previous session after recent weak economic data supported bets of a dovish pivot by the Federal Reserve next year. The SP500 and the Nasdaq eked out marginal gains on Thursday as Treasury yields fell after higher-than-expected jobless claims data underscored market expectations that interest rates have peaked. According to Bloomberg, Argentina's next president will take over in the middle of a financial emergency, which is par for the course in one of the world's most dysfunctional economies. Voters are heading to the polls on Sunday with the country expected to fall into recession for the sixth time in a decade, and inflation running above 140 percent. They are faced with two radically opposing proposals. The continuity of economy minister Sergio Massa, who vows to rein in fiscal spending without ending long-standing social rights, or the radical pledges of Javier Millet, who says he'd adopt the U.S. dollar as Argentina's currency as an alternative to the peso. According to Yahoo Finance, gasoline prices are headed lower going into the Thanksgiving holiday, creating a tailwind for drivers, predicts one energy analyst. People are going to have more money to spend based on spending less for gasoline, Tom Kloza, head of energy analysis at OPIS, told Yahoo Finance Live. According to Reuters, Booming demand for newer weight loss and diabetes drugs is expected to accelerate the rise in medical expenses for employers in the United States next year, staff health benefits consultant Mercer said on Friday. GLP-1 medications approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration could contribute between 50 and 100 basis points to the trend, Mercer's chief health actuary, Sunit Patel, told Reuters in an interview. According to Bloomberg, Brazilians had a record 5.5 trillion reais in domestic financial investments at the end of the third quarter, with the segment of high net worth retail customers growing at the fastest pace. In retail, about 3.5 trillion reais were held in more than 148 million accounts, while private banking had 2 trillion reais under management in 155,300 accounts, according to a report by Capital Markets Association Anbima. According to Reuters, Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma is very positive about the company and will continue to hold its shares, the South China Morning Post reported on Friday, citing a communique from his office. The comments from Ma's office come a day after a regulatory filing showed that his family trust was set to sell 10 million American depository shares of Alibaba Group Holdings, for about $871 million. According to Reuters, Barclays has been exploring a potential acquisition of Tesco's banking operations, two people familiar with the matter told Reuters.
The British food retailer has asked prospective buyers to submit non-binding offers for Tesco Bank by the end of the week, as part of efforts to shrink its financial services footprint, one of the people said. According to Reuters, San Francisco Federal Reserve President Mary Daly on Friday signaled she wants to adjust monetary policy only gradually, if at all, given the murky state of the economy and uncertainty over the outlook. When uncertainty is high and the risk to our objectives more balanced, we need to practice gradualism and to adhere to the idea that patience, measured adjustments and continual reassessment make for better outcomes, Daly said in remarks prepared for delivery to the 33rd Frankfurt European Banking Congress. According to Yahoo Finance, home builders broke ground on more new housing units in October and secured more permits for future development, but the uptick in activity remains below trend, according to one expert. New residential construction, including single-family and multifamily homes, increased 1.9% over in October from the month before to 1.372 million units on a seasonally adjusted basis, according to data from the Census Bureau released Friday. While that's down 4.2% versus the previous year, it's above the forecast of 1.350 million units from economists surveyed by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, ArcelorMittal said on Friday it had temporarily halted output at its Bosnia steel plant and at mines that supply it with iron ore due to a drop in demand in the European steel market. The company, which produces about 700,000 tons of liquid steel annually and employs about 2,200 workers, said the European steel market has cut demand due to a lower steel consumption that begun in 2022 with the war in Ukraine, the spike in energy prices and output costs, as well as inflation. According to Reuters, Apple has filed a legal case contesting decisions taken by the European Commission under its recently introduced Digital Markets Act, according to a post shared by the Court of Justice of the European Union on X. The tough new legislation targets 22 gatekeeper services run by six tech companies, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet's Google, Amazon, Meta and ByteDance's TikTok. According to Reuters, Amazon.com on Friday announced it is trimming roles its Alexa unit, according to an email to staff viewed by Reuters. The cuts affect several hundred employees working on the Alexa voice assistant, the company told Reuters Friday. According to Reuters, the junta that seized power in Gabon in August has paid the first installment of conservation fund money that forms a key part of a pioneering debt for nature deal sealed just before its coup. The $500 million debt swap was the first of its kind on continental Africa and saw the government of overthrown President Ali Bongo commit to protect Gabon's coastal waters that host the world's largest population of leatherback turtles. According to Reuters, the stopgap funding bill to keep the U.S. government open signed by President Joe Biden on Thursday includes funding through next September for farm programs and food assistance, but only a few months of funds for a key nutrition program for low-income mothers and their young children. The spending bill passed by the House on Tuesday and Senate on Wednesday funds government functions through January 19 and includes a one-year extension of the 2018 Bill Farm Bill, which expired on September 30. According to Reuters, Canada's support for the construction of three of the country's largest electric vehicle battery manufacturing factories is estimated to cost C$5.8 billion more than initially announced, the country's independent budgetary watchdog said on Friday. Canada, home to a large mining sector for minerals critical for battery production, has pledged billions in incentives to woo companies involved in all levels of the EV supply chain as the world seeks to cut carbon emissions. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Vice Chair for Supervision Michael Barr said policymakers are likely at or near the end of their campaign to raise interest rates as inflation continues to cool, echoing remarks he made last month. We're likely at or near the peak of where we need to be in terms of having a sufficiently restrictive stance of monetary policy that will sustainably bring inflation down to 2 percent, Barr said Friday during a moderated discussion with Bloomberg's Tracy Alloway and Joe Wiesenthal at an event in New York hosted by the Clearinghouse. According to Reuters, three music publishers are asking a federal court judge to issue a preliminary injunction that would prevent artificial intelligence company Anthropic from reproducing or distributing their copyrighted song lyrics. Universal Music, Concord Music Group and ABKCO Music filed a motion Thursday asking for the court to require Anthropic to implement effective guardrails, 
that would prevent the company's AI models from reproducing or distributing the copyrighted song lyrics, and to prevent the company from using these works to train future AI models. According to Bloomberg, a burst of activity in Bitcoin derivatives has evoked memories of the period in late 2021 when the token surged to an all-time high. Variables such as the cost of perpetual futures trades and options open interest point to a revival in speculative gusto for Bitcoin, which has more than doubled in price this year in a partial rebound from a 2022 route. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks edged lower on Friday as a rally this week ran out of steam with investors assessing remarks from Federal Reserve officials for clues on when the central bank may start cutting interest rates. The SP500 and the Nasdaq rose for the third straight session on Thursday as Treasury yields fell after higher-than-expected weekly jobless claims underscored market expectations that interest rates have peaked. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index rose to an eight-week high on Friday, driven by the gains in energy stocks, while data reflecting cooling domestic inflation stoked fresh hopes that the Bank of Canada was done with monetary tightening. At 10.04 a.m. Eastern Time, the Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index was up 97.18 points, or 0.48%, at 20,150.25, levels last seen in late September. According to Reuters, hundreds of patients desperately needed his help, but now there was nothing he could do. With Al-Ali Hospital shaking from Israeli tank fire and no more anesthetics left to operate, British-Palestinian surgeon Ghassan Abu Siddha told his team it was time to leave the last fully functioning hospital in Gaza City. According to Reuters, are U.S. stocks poised to continue their dramatic run, or is a pause ahead? That's the question investors are asking as the SP500 heads into the close of the year with a fresh record high coming into view. Signs of cooling inflation have fueled hopes that the Federal Reserve is done raising interest rates, helping extend a rally that has seen the SP500 gain over 9% since late October. The index is now up 17% for the year and about 6% from its record closing high from January 2022. According to Yahoo Finance, the stock market appears to be increasingly pricing in the possibility a historic rate hiking cycle from the Federal Reserve doesn't end in a recession. Take Tuesday's market action for instance. Inflation data showed pricing pressure cooling quicker than expected. Yields tied to the 10-year Treasury saw their biggest daily drop since March, as investors increasingly bet the Fed has done hiking rates. The SP500 and Nasdaq Composite had their best days since April. And the small-cap Russell 2000, which has lagged all year long, added 5% for its best day in a year. According to Reuters, David Boies, who became one of America's most prominent lawyers in cases involving Microsoft, the 2000 U.S. presidential election and the fight to legalize same-sex marriage, is stepping down next year as leader of the law firm he co-founded. The firm's partnership has been in tumult in recent years in part because of Boies' representation of. According to Bloomberg, ChargePoint Holdings Inc. shares plummeted in early trading after the company posted disappointing quarterly revenue and swapped out two of its top executives. The electric vehicle charging company said revenue slumped to $108 million to $113 million for the quarter that ended last month, down from a year ago and well short of its guidance for at least $150 million. Pasquale Romano, who had been chief executive officer since 2011, and chief financial officer Rex Jackson were replaced effective Thursday. According to Reuters, a debate over engine performance has exposed a dilemma facing aerospace firms at this week's Dubai Airshow. The hottest part of the jet market is also the hottest part of the world. Airlines want to save on fuel and have the lowest possible maintenance costs. But those forces are pulling against each other in sandy or dusty environments like the Gulf and India. According to Reuters, the U.S. will fund nine projects with $169 million from last year's climate bill to speed manufacturing of heat pumps, systems that can heat and cool homes and businesses more efficiently, the Energy Department said on Friday. The awards are the first from the department's authorization invoked by President Joe Biden using emergency authority on the basis of climate change to use the Cold War-era Defense Production Act to boost spending on clean energy technologies. According to Reuters, the Federal Reserve's top bank watchdog defended its push to overhaul capital requirements, 
saying they would have a minimal impact on borrowing costs and make the industry more stable. Michael Barr, the Fed's vice chair for supervision, told a conference in New York on Friday that the so-called Basel Endgame proposal is mainly focused on raising capital requirements for activities like trading, rather than lending. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston President Susan Collins said Friday while evidence is growing that inflation is easing, she's not yet ready to rule out more rate hikes should they be needed. In order to get back down to 2% in a reasonable amount of time you need to be patient and resolute, and I wouldn't take additional firming off the table, Collins said in a CNBC interview. According to Reuters, a nonprofit that monitors online hate speech urged a U.S. federal judge to throw out what it called a ridiculous lawsuit by Elon Musk's X Corp to stifle free expression. X, formerly Twitter, sued the Center for Countering Digital Hate in July, accusing it of trying to drive advertisers away through a scare campaign, showing hate speech and other harmful content appeared to be overwhelming the platform. According to Reuters, the Detroit Casino Council said on Friday it has reached a tentative agreement for a new contract covering 3,700 workers at MGM Grand Detroit operated by MGM Resorts, Hollywood Casino at Greektown operated by Penn and Motor City Casino. The five-year agreement ends a month-long strike which was the first in the history of the Detroit Casino Council, a negotiating committee representing five labor unions. According to Reuters, millions of gig Workers may get missed every month in the U.S. government's employment report, a discrepancy with implications for how Federal Reserve officials size up the job market and any associated inflation risks. Research prepared for a Boston Federal Reserve labor market conference found that whether driving for Uber to make ends meet or taking piecework jobs in retirement, casual contract workers sometimes don't consider themselves, employed, or even a part of the labor force. According to Reuters, ChargePoint Holdings stock slumped by nearly 38% to a record low on Friday after the electric vehicle charging network slashed its third-quarter revenue forecast and replaced key executives. ChargePoint expects revenue to drop to between $108 million and $113 million, far below a previous forecast of between $150 million and $165 million, owing to weak demand caused by delays in electric vehicle deliveries in North America and Europe the company said after the closing bell on Thursday. It will report its third quarter results on December 6. According to Reuters, Swiss miner AR Core said on Friday its exploration in eastern Bosnia had found mineral deposit rich in lithium carbonate, magnesium and other minerals that are in demand in Europe. The company said it has a strategic partnership with Canadian-German company RockTech Lithium to secure a reliable and long-term supply of lithium products from the Lopare mine to RockTech Lithium's European converter operations. According to Reuters, JBS, the world's leading meatpacker, on Monday will reopen a large Brazilian beef unit in Diamantino, Mato Grosso State, which had been closed after a fire in June, the company said on Friday. JBS also announced it will invest an initial 300 million reyes, of a total investment of 800 million reyes, to transform the facility into Latin America's largest beef plant. According to Reuters, Middle East airlines are gearing up for increased competition after Dubai carriers went on an order spree at the region's largest airshow, watched by potential rivals teasing their own deals. As wide-body jet orders worth $67 billion at list prices tumbled out of the Dubai airshow, Saudi and Turkish national carriers were finalizing blockbuster orders from the sidelines. According to Bloomberg, embattled Swedish landlord Sam Hall's Bignadsbolaget i Norden AB, also known as SBB, has been placed on watch for a possible downgrade to selective default after offering to buy back some of its bonds at discounted prices. We may view purchases of certain tranches conducted at substantial discounts to par as tantamount to default, SP Global Ratings said in a statement Friday. We will consider whether the transactions would involve investors receiving less than the original promise, and whether there is a realistic possibility of a conventional default on the instruments. According to Reuters, Western lithium and graphite miners have started charging the electric vehicle supply chain higher prices for their material meeting demand for environmentally friendly and consistent supply that is not linked to China.
In presentations and interviews at this week's Benchmark Critical Minerals Conference in Los Angeles, industry executives, consultants and investors touted the premium pricing model as a way to help prod development of non-Chinese supply, a goal of Washington, Brussels and other Western governments. According to Reuters, OPEC Plus is set to consider whether to make additional oil supply cuts when the group meets later this month, three OPEC Plus sources told Reuters after prices dropped by almost 20% since late September. Oil has slid to around $79 a barrel for Brent crude from a 2023 high in September near $98. Concern about demand and a possible surplus next year has pressured prices, despite support from the OPEC Plus cuts and conflict in the Middle East. According to Bloomberg, Goodyear Tire Rubber Company announced a flurry of leadership changes this week as part of a sweeping transformation plan designed to cut costs after months of pressure from activist Elliott Investment Management. Shares of the tire manufacturer rose 2.8% on Wednesday, the day the changes were announced. Since Elliott started its campaign, the stock has risen nearly 20%, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, a merchant ship transporting grains was lightly damaged off the coast of Ukraine and was likely to have been hit by a floating sea mine, according to maritime specialists and a Ukrainian government source. This is the latest incident affecting commercial ships sailing in the Black Sea. According to Reuters, stronger than expected U.S. home construction data sent the SPDRSP homebuilders ETF up nearly 1% on Friday, pushing it close to a one year high even as the broader market remained largely flat. The ETF, which tracks the performance of a group of stocks in the home construction industry as well as appliance manufacturers, home furnishings companies, and building products businesses, was up about 0.8% at $82.21 in early afternoon trading, just below the 52-week high of $85.13 recorded in July. According to Reuters, Brazilian plainmaker Embraer expects its revenue to grow by about 20% in 2024, its chief executive said on Friday. CEO Francisco Gomes Neto, in an interview with Reuters, cautioned that the company's official financial forecast would not be available until early next year, but said it is currently expecting about 20% growth in revenue as well as deliveries. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Friday said it had identified the recall of B. Braun Medical Inc.'s medicine delivering pump system as most serious. The Pennsylvania-based company had recalled some models of its Infusomat space volumetric infusion pump system in September due to faulty occlusion alarms, which may cause the pump to stop the delivery of medications preemptively or cause interruption. According to Bloomberg, the upcoming closures of two of J.P. Morgan's socially conscious exchange-traded funds are shining a spotlight on the vanishing appetite for environmental, social and governance products. An unprecedented $7.7 billion has left do-good ETFs this year following 10 straight years of inflows, Bloomberg Intelligence data show. Issuers have shut down a record 14 ESG funds so far in 2023 amid the outflows, with the J.P. Morgan Sustainable Consumption ETF and J.P. Morgan Social Advancement ETF set to be liquidated by year-end, according to a press release Thursday. According to Reuters, the White House on Friday accused Elon Musk of repeating a hideous, anti-Semitic lie on his social media site X this week, calling it an abhorrent promotion of anti-Semitic and racist hate that runs against our core values as Americans. It is unacceptable to repeat the hideous lie behind the most fatal act of anti-Semitism in American history at any time, let alone one month after the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust, White House spokesperson Andrew Bates said responding to Musk's post on Wednesday and referring to Hamas' October 7 attack on Israel. According to Reuters, Swedish defense equipment maker Saab received an order worth about Swedish crowns $4.3 billion from a government of a Western country, the company said on Friday. The order is for a number of defense systems and equipment, and includes systems from Saab's business areas dynamics and surveillance, the company said. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden concludes a four-day diplomatic push with China and other Pacific nations by holding a final meeting on Friday with world leaders and a visit with Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador. Biden, who met with President Xi Jinping on Wednesday and used Thursday to highlight strong economic ties between the U.S. and the other Pacific nations, 
will have one final large gathering of leaders on Friday where he will formally transfer the chair of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum to Peru President Dina Bolwarte. According to Bloomberg, JBS Saw, the world's largest meat producer, will reopen a Brazilian beef processing plant that had been shut down after a fire in June and turn it into the company's largest in South America. The Diamantino, Mato Grosso-based facility will resume operations on Monday with an initial cattle slaughtering capacity of 600 heads a day, with the goal of reaching 1,800 heads a day in the coming weeks, the Sao Paulo-based company said in a statement. The meatpacker plans to spend a total 800 million reis on the facility, with total capacity potentially reaching 3,600 heads a day through next year, a spokesman said. According to Bloomberg, United Airlines presents itself as the unrivaled leader in cleaner jet fuel. A recent ad campaign featuring the garbage can dwelling Oscar the Grouch as the airline's new chief trash officer, publicizes its commitment to turn banana peels and old socks into less polluting jet fuel. In another ad, the company says it's investing in more sustainable aviation fuel production than any other airline in the world. Chicago-based United Airlines Holdings Inc., like the rest of the aviation industry, is grappling with its enormous climate impact. According to Reuters, lawmakers on Capitol Hill on Friday renewed public calls for an investigation into the allegations of sexual harassment and other workplace misconduct at the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The announcements came as FDIC chair Martin Grunberg this week faced calls for his resignation following Wall Street Journal reporting according to which the agency had failed to eradicate widespread harassment in its workforce and spotlighting Grunberg's personal role in cases of alleged harassment and discrimination. According to Reuters, One Life Fitness, a U.S. operator of health and fitness clubs that is partly owned by private equity investor Josh Harris, is exploring a sale that could value it at around $700 million, including debt, three people familiar with the matter said. The McLean, Virginia-based company, which is majority owned by the family office that invests Harris's wealth and private equity firm Delos Capital, is working with investment banks Jefferies Financial Group Inc. and North Point Advisors on a sale process that is in its early stages, the sources said. According to Yahoo Finance, Space stocks have taken a beating in 2023 as the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes made it more expensive for companies to borrow, hitting capital-intensive industries particularly hard. Virgin Galactic, the space tourism company founded by billionaire Richard Branson, is down about 37% year-to-date while satellite imagery company Planet Labs is trading nearly 50% lower. Rocket launch services startup Astraspace is down 80% this year. According to Reuters, rising U.S. government debt and fiscal deficits that have helped lift government bond yields this year will likely become secondary factors for investors, as their focus shifts to economic fundamentals, city analysts said. According to Yahoo Finance, it's lights out, at the start, or better yet, lights on, across the Las Vegas Strip as the Formula One circus comes to town. With this being Vegas, qualification gets started Friday night at midnight local time with race set for Saturday night at 10 p.m., when viewers in places like Europe will wake up to 20 F1 cars streaking down Las Vegas Boulevard. Formula One. The once insular, don't bother attending if you can't afford a suite at the Four Seasons European-based racing series, has been on an American onslaught. Colorado-based Liberty Media bought Formula One for $4.4 billion back in 2017, and had plans for growing the business, especially in America. According to Yahoo Finance, financial markets have finally decided that a two-and-a-half-year bout with inflation is winding down. The question now is whether voters who will determine the next U.S. president agree. The inflation report for October showed continuing declines in the overall rate of inflation and in price levels for most things. The annualized inflation rate fell from 3.7% in September to 3.2% in October. That's a sharp drop from the peak of 8.9% inflation in June of 2022. According to Bloomberg, Jim Ratcliffe's bid for up to a 25% stake in Manchester United PLC will give the English Premier League football club an equity value of roughly £4.4 billion. The UK billionaire has offered about $33 a share for the stake in the famous old football club, people familiar with the matter said. That represents a 79% premium to the stock's Thursday closing price in New York.
According to Reuters, retailers are preparing for what they hope will be yet another record-setting global shopping spree on Black Friday, the fourth Friday of November, which this year is November 24. Known for crowds lining up at big box stores to pounce on doorbuster discounts during the early hours after American Thanksgiving, Black Friday normally marks the unofficial start of the Christmas shopping season. Retailers in the US, Europe and elsewhere will be trying to cash in on the hoopla. Here is what to expect from Black Friday 2023. Why is it called, Black, Friday? According to Reuters, Hyundai Motor and Kia see strong US demand for electric vehicles, senior executives at the South Korean automakers told Reuters ahead of the Los Angeles Auto Show. The comments run against industry fears that inflation and higher interest rates will undermine the boom in EV sales. Other major EV makers from Tesla to Ford Motor have pushed back EV-related factory build-outs in the face of economy-related concern. According to Bloomberg, drillers in the U.S. shale patch are again trying to rebound from slumping activity this time expanding the oil rig count by the widest margin in nine months. The number of U.S. rigs drilling for oil rose by 6 to 500, the biggest weekly jump since late February, according to data released by Baker Hughes Company on Friday. The boost was led by explorers in the Permian Basin of West Texas and New Mexico, where four oil rigs were added. That's the biggest increase in the region since mid-March. According to Reuters, a string of hefty bets on a doubling of Wall Street's best-known volatility index is raising eyebrows in the U.S. equity options markets, though analysts say they are probably not wagers on a market crash. Some 100,000 January call options on the CBOE volatility index changed hands on Friday, with a strike price of 27. That is nearly twice the current level of the VIX, which has fallen close to a two-month low of 13.69 following a rally that has seen the SP500 advance to within 2% of its year high. According to Reuters, mining company Vale Base Metals said its unit Vale Canada Limited in Japan's Sumitomo Metal Mining Co. Limited signed an initial agreement on Friday to sell a 14% stake in their Indonesian nickel mining unit to Indonesia's state miner. Vale Canada and Sumitomo signed a heads of agreement to sell the shares to PT Mineral Industry Indonesia, the country's state mining holding company, Vale Base Metals said in a statement. According to Yahoo Finance, the health industry is plagued with many stumbling blocks these days, from new and controversial tech like AI to ever-increasing costs and an opaque health delivery system. Yahoo Finance Live tackled all that and more in a week-long series, November. 13 to 17, focused on various aspects of the healthcare industry. We heard from industry leaders, Wall Street analysts, and experts about some of the biggest topics of 2023. Here are some of the highlights. According to Reuters, as Federal Reserve officials near the midway point between their last policy meeting and the final one of the year, they appear to be converging on a message of patience, a signal they intend to leave interest rates unchanged as they wait for more evidence inflation is cooling. We can take our time to do it right, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly on Friday told a central banking conference in Frankfurt, Germany, referring to the U.S. central bank's battle to bring down high inflation. According to Reuters, Venezuela's National Assembly President Jorge Rodriguez on Friday said the country would not accept ultimatums from anyone, after the U.S. warned it would review plans to ease sanctions if progress is not made toward fair elections. Washington eased some oil sanctions last month after an electoral deal between President Nicolas Maduro's government and the political opposition was signed in October. According to Reuters, the slowdown in the luxury market following a post-pandemic boom could not come at a worse time for Burberry, with designer Daniel Lee's first styles for the British label trickling into newly refurbished stores. Executives cautioned on Thursday that they would struggle to meet Burberry's annual revenue forecast pointing to a darkening macroeconomic climate across the globe and capping off a tumultuous reporting season for the sector. According to Reuters, Citigroup employees expect announcements about management changes and layoffs on Monday in the next phase of the bank's sweeping reorganization, according to four people familiar with the situation. Employees are awaiting more details about the scale of layoffs at the bank, which employs 240,000 people worldwide. According to Reuters, Meta's head of augmented reality software is stepping down from his role, a company spokesperson told Reuters on Friday, 
raising questions about the company's progress in developing a custom operating system for its planned AR glasses. VP of Engineering Don Box announced the end of his tenure at Meta internally this week, without elaborating on what he would do next, according to a source familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, U.S. defense company Northrop Grumman has pulled out of a competition to supply narrowband military satellite communications for Britain's armed forces, the Financial Times reported on Friday. Northrop had partnered with Airbus in its bid. According to Bloomberg, don't be fooled by Friday's sharp relief rally in oil and gas equities as the picture is still bleak for crude supply and demand. Energy stocks in the SP500 index followed oil higher with a benchmark leading 2.5% intraday jump as the sector narrowly avoided notching its second straight weekly decline. But the move in crude supporting the stocks is nothing more than a dead cat bounce, after speculators liquidated positions this week, according to Roth MKM analyst Leo Mariani. According to Reuters, the U.S. State Department has approved the potential sale of 400 Tomahawk missiles and related equipment to Japan in a deal valued at $2.35 billion, the Pentagon said on Friday. The sale comes as U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping agreed on Wednesday to open a presidential hotline, resume military-to-military -military communications, and work to curb fentanyl production, showing tangible progress in their first face-to-face -face talks in a year. According to Reuters, chat GPT maker OpenAI said on Friday Sam Altman will step down as the company's chief executive officer. OpenAI's chief technology officer Mira Maradi will serve as interim CEO, the company said. According to Reuters, Adobe said on Friday it has received the European Commission's statement of objections related to its $20 billion bid for cloud-based designer platform Figma and was reviewing it carefully. The EU agency had in August opened a full-scale investigation into Adobe's proposed acquisition of Figma, saying that it could reduce competition in global markets for interactive product design tools and shut out rivals. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden on Friday urged Asia-Pacific economies to work together to ensure that artificial intelligence brings change for the better, not to abuse workers or limit potential. Addressing the final session of a two-day summit of the 21-member Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum in San Francisco, Biden said he had briefly discussed AI with Chinese President Xi Jinping in talks on the sidelines of APEC on Wednesday. According to Yahoo Finance, the Chevrolet Corvette, Lucid Air EV, the Nissan GTR aka, Godzilla, and the Toyota Prius? Believe it or not the all-new, Super practical Toyota Prius joined the ranks of these sporty cars as Motor Trend's car of the year. According to Reuters, world stocks steadied near two month peaks on Friday and Treasury yields briefly touched two month lows as investors held fast to the belief that U.S. interest rates have peaked and might even fall next year. But a reality check came when Federal Reserve Bank of Boston President Susan Collins said on Friday that while evidence is growing that inflation is easing, she was not yet ready to rule out more rate hikes should they be needed. According to Bloomberg, Sam Altman, one of the most prominent figures in the world of artificial intelligence, is leaving OpenAI with the company's board saying he wasn't always candid and that it had lost confidence in him as a leader. Chief Technology Officer Mira Maradi will serve as OpenAI's interim chief executive officer. According to Reuters, Electric truck maker Nikola said on Friday Chief Financial Officer Anastasia Pasterik would resign to pursue other opportunities, less than a year after joining the loss-making company. Pasterik was appointed to the role in March this year after the exit of Kim Brady, who was credited with taking Nikola public through a merger with a blank check firm in 2020. According to Reuters, Figma said on Friday it was carefully reviewing the EU competition watchdog's statement of objections related to Photoshop maker Adobe's proposed $20 billion bid to buy out the cloud-based designer platform. The EU agency had in August opened a full-scale investigation into Adobe's proposal to buy Figma, saying that it could reduce competition in global markets for interactive product design tools and shut out rivals. According to Reuters, Abris Capital Partners Investment Fund is mulling a sale of private healthcare provider ScanMed Group, with Polish cardiovascular care company American Heart of Poland being the most likely buyer, sources familiar with the process told Reuters.
The Polish private healthcare sector is attracting investors as Poles' expenditures on health are growing rapidly. In 2022, expenditures on private healthcare grew by over 10% to almost 52 billion zlotys. According to Reuters, days after General Motors' cruise self-driving car unit pulled all of its vehicles off the roads in the U.S. for a safety review, it continues to test them on public roads in Dubai and Japan, Reuters has learned. Cruise this week said it had paused all car trips in the U.S. including ones where a safety driver was in the vehicle, and expanded the scope of its internal investigation following an October accident that caught the attention of regulators. Earlier this month, it suspended all fully autonomous rides and recalled 950 vehicles. According to Reuters, Bayer said on Friday it was voluntarily recalling one lot of its cancer drug Vitracvi in the U.S. due to the presence of microbial contamination. The recalled lot was distributed to wholesalers and specialty pharmacies in the U.S. between January 3 and February 13 this year. According to Reuters, a ship with supplies for Canadian miner First Quantum's unit in Panama was unable to dock as local boats blocked off access to the key port, the company said in a statement to Reuters on Friday. Protests have in recent weeks escalated against the miners' contract for a major copper mine operated by the company's local unit, known as Minera Panama. According to Reuters, Rio Tinto agreed to pay a $28 million civil fine to settle a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuit that accused the Anglo-Australian mining company of fraud in its handling of a failed investment in a Mozambique coal project. The settlement disclosed on Friday in Manhattan Federal Court would end a lawsuit filed in October 2017, and requires approval by U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres. According to Reuters, Boston Fed President Susan Collins said Friday she remained optimistic that the U.S. Central Bank can lower inflation without doing substantial damage to the job market by taking a patient approach to any further interest rate moves. Collins said that while she is not taking the possibility of further rate increases off the table, by being very patient right now, to me that helps to support my realistic optimism, of returning inflation to 2% without a substantial rise in unemployment. According to Reuters, freight train companies operating in Mexico have until January 15 to submit proposals outlining how their railways can be adapted to offer passenger transport, according to a draft Mexican government decree seen by Reuters on Friday. According to Bloomberg, Jim Chanos, the legendary short seller known for his bearish bets against Enron and Tesla Inc., is shuttering his hedge funds after almost four decades. Chanos Company, which he founded as Kinecos Associates in 1985, plans to return capital to investors by the end of the year, according to a letter to clients Friday. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston President Susan Collins said policymakers should not take further tightening off the table despite welcome progress on inflation. In order to get back down to 2% in a reasonable amount of time we need to be patient and resolute, and I wouldn't take additional firming off the table, Collins said Friday on CNBC. We need to really stay the course. According to Bloomberg, OpenAI Interim Chief Executive Officer Mira Maradi was honored and humbled to step into the leadership role at the company following the ouster of Sam Altman, according to a memo she sent to staff reviewed by Bloomberg. Maradi also urged employees still reeling from the sudden departure of Altman, one of the most prominent figures in the artificial intelligence industry, to focus on their work. According to Reuters, Israel issued a fresh warning to Palestinians in the southern city of Khan Yunus to relocate west out of the line of fire and closer to humanitarian aid in the latest indication that it plans to attack Hamas in southern Gaza after subduing the north. We're asking people to relocate. I know it's not easy for many of them, but we don't want to see civilians caught up in the crossfire, Mark Regev, an aide to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, told MSNBC on Friday. According to Bloomberg, it's another sweltering Saturday evening in Singapore, and the air conditioning at the Ion Orchard shopping mall is doing its job. Inside, well-heeled tourists and locals line up behind a velvet rope, eagerly awaiting their entry into a room bursting with hues of orange, blue and gold. But this isn't a trendy nightclub, or even a chance to check out the newest iPhone. Once admitted, these guests will be drinking coffee. According to Bloomberg, 
a week of rare wins for Chinese President Xi Jinping on the geopolitical front has done little to dispel the persistent pessimism that's gripped the world's second-largest equities market. This was seen a crucial period for investors in China, not least because of Xi's much-awaited meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. And while the two leaders agreed to restore high-level military communications, combat fentanyl and open a dialogue over artificial intelligence, such developments were written off as small wins by traders, who want to see more progress on bigger issues like U.S. curbs on chip exports and tariffs. According to Reuters, after nearly four decades, Jim Chanos is shutting down hedge funds he manages that wager against companies he believes are overpriced or fraudulent, the Wall Street Journal reported on Friday. His firm, Chanos Company, manages less than $200 million today, down from $6 billion in 2008, the report said. Chanos expects to return most of his investors' cash by December 31, it said. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Friday approved the use of Medtronic's treatment device in a surgery called renal denervation in patients whose high blood pressure cannot be controlled by drugs, the company said. The agency's decision is in contrast with the recommendation of a panel of independent experts, who narrowly voted against allowing the use of the device in August. According to Reuters, artificial intelligence may be well known for generating human-like images out of whole cloth, but if the software has a public face it is Sam Altman's. The co-founder of OpenAI, which caused a sensation just a year ago with the introduction of ChatGPT, Altman has presented himself as the benevolent wizard behind the curtain of a technology that many say could upend entire industries and even mankind itself. According to Reuters, a potential joint bid for the Taiwan's presidency by the island's two main opposition parties was in disarray on Saturday after the smaller of the two said no consensus had been reached on how to use opinion polls make that decision. The issue of China, which views Taiwan as its territory, looms over the January 13 parliamentary and presidential elections. China has stepped up military and political pressure, including high-profile war games, to press the island to accept its sovereignty claim, which Taiwan rejects. According to Reuters, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. met with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Saturday, seeking ways to come up with mechanisms to lower tensions in the South China Sea. The Philippines and China need to continue to communicate, Marcos told reporters on the sidelines of the APEC summit in San Francisco. According to Reuters, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida pledged cooperation on clean energy supply chains, quantum computing and other innovative technology during a Silicon Valley roundtable on Friday. It was the latest effort by the Asian neighbors to improve ties, which had been in what Kishida called, deep difficulty, before he and Yoon embarked this year on a campaign to repair them. According to Reuters, Pacific Rim leaders showed divisions over the wars in Ukraine and Gaza after a two-day summit of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum on Friday, although they pledged support for reform of the World Trade Organization. Days of meetings involving APEC ministers and leaders were dominated by a summit on Wednesday between U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping aimed at cooling tensions between the world's two largest economies, which have alarmed the region. 